first a little bit about navigation. With the Alt button and the left mouse button, we can turn the model around. With the uh, Alt and the middle mouse button, we can move it. And with the right mouse button, we can zoom in and out. Uh, first, I wanted to talk about the difference between the base materials and the smart materials. Um, base materials come with a single layer and you can find its properties in the properties panel for, for further editing. If you want to work with smart materials, you get a folder with different uh, texture layers that together make a smart material. All these layers are doing something different and their unique properties you can edit in the properties panel, like changing the color or scaling, for example. That is something I didn't understand first, but all these properties affect the five output channels that you can see here, uh, color, haze, roughness, metal, and normal. So all these layers in the layer stack together are going to result in these layer maps. You can change which, which layer is doing what and which channel they are going to affect. If you change the viewport and open the 2D view of the material, you can see the texture maps that uh, we can export at the end. So you can see the, the final texture maps on the right side. With the blending modes and transparency, you can blend and mix everything together in your layer stack, but at the end, it will become one texture map per channel. In the left viewport, in the drop-down menu, you can uh, select and check the different texture maps, how, how they look. A base color, haze map, like roughness, um, for example. So you can see how the texture map will look when, when you export them. I find this important to share because it took me some time to understand when uh, when I started to learn Substance Painter how how this whole system works. As a start, let's texture the house from the scene. I drag and drop the model that I downloaded from Substance 3 assets into Painter, and in this pop-up window, I uh, change a few things. The PBR metallic roughness is a good template for us. I change the document resolution. Um, we don't need auto um, rep, so don't tick that box. When you're ready, just click OK. First, we have to bake the mesh maps, which is uh, very important. Go to Edit and select Bake Mesh Maps. Baking is the process of saving information from a CD mesh to a texture file. These informations are read by shaders and filters to perform advanced effects. Smart materials and the smart masks rely on them, for example, and we are going to use these in the project later on. What I always change is the output size and the anti-aliasing, which can improve the quality of um, baked textures and use uh, aliasing um, where different geometries connect. The higher you set it, the longer it will take, so it depends on your, your video card how long it will take. Mine is an NVIDIA GeForce uh, RTX 3090, so I set it to the maximum. It's still a process though, so depending on the complexity of the model, it can take some time. Click uh, Bake Selected Textures and now we wait. Let's take a look at the windows first. I like to keep my textures at least layers and property window open, so I have easy access to all the parts I want to work on. In the textures, at least, you can find the different parts of the model that can be textured separately. Let's start with the walls. I chose the material stylist plaster and brick wall for this part. I locate the material in my assets panel and simply drag and drop it where I want to see it. In the properties panel, we can change a lot of things. I like to check how my materials look with another projection mode. so. I changed this to triplanar projection, but that is not really necessary. After that, I changed the scale of the material. If you scroll down, there are the color properties we can change. Um, you can change the colors to any color, use a hex code or save your swatches from a previous session. The plaster density is another parameter that we can change. Let's move on to the roof elements. In the Smart Materials panel on the left, you can find the material called Steel Painted. I really like this material, so I chose this for the roof of the house. Open the material folder in the Layers panel and, uh, and you will see all the layers. We can change the base color in the Properties panel. If you click on the mask of the paint layer, you will see some generators that work inside of this layer. Click on the mask editor and change the details of how much the paint is showing on the metal base. Global balance and curvature are the ones I go to first. 
Next up is drag and drop a material onto the window frame. I chose the material called plastic mat. I changed a few micro details and the uh, scaling properties. For the part called wall plaster, I selected the material called Super Fabric Superhero. What I like about silly texturing is that I can be creative and completely change the look of a certain model with different materials and I can use a fabric material on a house because why not? It has a certain plastic feel to it actually. Just drag and drop the material like before. I changed the projection to triplanner and changed the shade of the blue a little bit in the properties panel. This is a very useful trick that I like to use when I want to use the same material on different parts of the model that don't share the same texture set. Select the material that you want to use on different parts and the right mouse click will open the menu where you can select initiate across texture sets. Select the parts where you would like to apply the material and the click OK. As you can see, it worked well and the material is now on the other part of, of the model too. When you are happy with your model, go to File, Send to Substance 3D Stager and let's see how it looks in the render preview. If the model is too big for the window, click on the frame selection icon so the whole model will be visible in the viewport. I didn't texture the windows in Painter because I wanted to use the glass material from Stager on them. You can find it among the starter assets and just drag and drop it onto the model. With a sampler tool, you can apply the same material on multiple selected models at the same time. I like to do this as it links the materials together and I can edit all the three parts at the same time in the material panel. Next step is to texture the drone. I will speed up the process a bit. It's the same that we did for the house, first import and then bake. For the wings, I use the material called Steel Painted Scrape Dirty. After opening the folder and locating the mask editor of the dirt layer, we can change a few things. I changed the curvature of the paint layer as well. Next step was to drag and drop a blue plastic material from the materials panel onto the small parts of the wing. I only changed the color for this one. After this, I copied the red painted metal material from the small wings to all the other metal parts of the model with the initiate across texture sets command that I showed you earlier. For the body, I selected a material called plastic stripes. This is a basic, basic material, so there is no folder. Simply select the material, go to properties and start just changing the parameters the way you like it. I wanted to add a few personal touches to this model, so I created a new fill layer in the layers panel and made it dark gray. I added a black mask to it. This is one of the ways to add more hand painted uh, touches to material. Um, we can directly paint onto the model with the brush that you can select from the brushes panel on the left, or we can upload um, our own image to to use as a stamp, for example. In the properties panel, you can see that now it says uh, properties paint, which means that we have a whole different set of parameters to change. We can change the brush hardness, um, like in Photoshop and many other things. I selected a grunge brush called Kai's Concept Brushes uh, Crystalline, yeah. And I use this to paint a new dirt effect on my model. I changed the layer opacity so it has a somewhat subtle effect. There is something really fun that I wanted to show you and it's called particle brushes. Um, these are dynamic brushes that are interacting with the surface in a special way. For me, it's a bit like magic, so <laughs> let's try it out. I created a new fill layer and made it white and added a black mask to it. The plan is to create a little weathering effect on the model. 
I selected the organic spread brush. In the properties panel, you can change the opacity and jitter. And once you're done, try to paint on the model and see what happens. These brushes are doing their own thing, so the result is always a bit accidental. But this is what I love about it the most. One of the final touches uh, is to add some good old dirt to this model. Create a fill layer, add the black mask to it, and uh, add the dirt generator to the mask. Now you will see how the dirt is just showing in the cracks. The last thing added to this model were these uh, spray painted elements. I created a black fill layer and added the black mask to it. From the brushes panel, I selected the basic hard brush and if you scroll down in the properties panel under the alpha tab, you will find the place where you can change this uh, alpha map. From the drop down menu, um, I selected one of the different alphas and I applied it to the model. The last bit is a little red circle shape painted on top. So I created a new fill layer, changed the color to red and selected the alpha from the properties panel. Now the drone is ready and let's send it to Stager. There is a lot more about sampler that I can show in this tutorial, but I hope this is going to inspire you to start creating your own materials. I like to turn all kinds of images into materials with sampler. Let's take a look how I created these weird pink materials that I used on the mountains in the back. I wanted to try this forever, so for this material I used a picture I created by artificial intelligence using an app called Snowpixel. You can try this with any hand-painted image as well. To keep things simple, I use a square image because it's better for the tiling. Open a new document in Sampler uh, and drag and drop the image into the viewport. Select image to material that will automatically create the material for you. So this is how the material turned out. Under the viewport, you can change the tiling and the displacement of, of the material. I like it the way it is, so let's move on to tiling. I add a new filter um, called Make It Tile that makes the material seamless, basically. In the viewport, you can see how the material changes when you change the settings. It takes some practice to figure this out, and it uh, depends on the image you used as well. If you have been wondering what atlases can do from Substance Media Sets, in Sampler, it's possible to scatter them on the material. I wanted to add some pebbles, so I add the new filter called Atlas Scatter, and from the assets on the left, I select the atlas I want to use. In the properties panel, there are multiple options to choose from. I scale down the pebbles and change their frequency. The dirt filter helps with the cohesion of the material. You can add this from the filter menu. You can change the color of the dirt to create interesting effects. The dust filter has a similar effect to the dirt. These two together are my favorite one when I create a material.
when you're happy with the final result, you can send the material to Substance 3D Painter and start texturing with it. I wanted to use this on the large um, rock model, so first I import and bake them in Painter before texturing. Locate the material in Painter and drop it onto the model. You can change the scale uh, to achieve the desired look. The best is always to mix multiple materials, so I drop another custom material that I made in Sampler into the layer stack. With the opacity and blending modes, you can easily blend two materials together. As the next step, I wanted to add a third material with a gradient. I chose a glossy plastic material as a top layer and changed the color in the properties panel. I added a black mask to it and uh, added the generator. I selected the position generator that helps to create uh, this gradient effect. With the global balance and contrast, we can, we can change the, this gradient completely. And uh, as the final touch, I added a usual dirt generator. This time I changed the blending mode to multiply to have a different effect. When we are happy with the outcome, we can send the model to Stager. 